Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you. Welcome, guys, to the GTUG meet. And uh, I'm the Panchan, so I look after the acquisition efforts for Google in this region. So what I'm going to do is actually get you through a couple of slides because I don't really want this to be a slide-heavy presentation. But I instead I want it to be very interactive. I want you guys to ask me questions. You know, how many of you have heard about AdWords or know about AdWords? Show of hands. Okay. Okay. Few of you. Great. So um, what I'll do is I'll quickly go through the presentation and you know without. The, the do, let me go to the agenda. So pretty much we have the introduction and uh, we go through Google and the changing marketplace. Uh, after that we'll understand a bit of what Google AdWord does and at the end we have like a 10 or 15 minutes uh, session for question and answers. And in case you all have any questions, uh, when I'm presenting please feel free to stop me. Sounds good? Great. Okay. So a little quiz that I have, and uh, let me tell you, if any one of you can guess the well, why the significance of the number out there, then you are getting an exclusive... I wish I still don't have one myself. <laughs> but an exclusive you know, Google sticker. <laughs> okay, if that is not good enough, we are actually giving out a free $50 voucher to start with your uh, Google AdWords advertising. Okay, so the first figure, 21%, can any one of you guess what this is? No, and the, the clue is the internet. Anyone, you guys are techies, right? I'm not a techie, so don't ask me any technical questions. Sorry, someone? Ads. Ads are? People Okay, you're, you're close, but not yet there. Anyone else? This is pretty easy. Sorry? Your name, sir? Afriz, yeah? Fantastic. Can we have a round of applause? If you don't mind, can you just pass in one free Google $50 voucher to start AdWords and the exclusive limited edition? Google stickers. Please, if you don't mind. So this is actually, guys, like you mentioned, the world's population which is online. Thank you. Okay. The second one. Again, the clue is community. Fifty dollar Google AdWords voucher free. Anyone? Yes, sir. <laughs> but close, yes, anyone else? Connected users. Connected users? Google users. Google users? No, we are Google, but it's okay, still. Anyone else? He's close. What? Social network. I have to. Can I have your name again? Because he came first. First come, first serve. Sorry? No. So what, what, what was the answer? Uh, number of people using social, social site. Fantastic. So this is the number of people who are on social networking. Monsieur, if you don't mind, he's French, so I call him Monsieur. <laughs> Please, let's have a round of applause. You can give me that bunch. I can, I can. So these numbers are significant and the reason we are giving out these vouchers because these are significant numbers. They are not just out there to give out vouchers because I'll come to them later. Thank you very much. Okay, the third one going. 109 billion. Again, clue is information. Anyone? Sorry, websites? Nah. Turbo Sarkis. Turbo Sarkis. Your name, sir? Rio. Rio. Can I have a... Round of applause. This is the average number of searches any given month that's done on the internet. So, you are right. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, this is quite easy. This is like the easiest out of all the four and the last question. In front of television computer. You are if you don't need some? You are absolutely great. <laughs> Anyone else? Sorry, I was just kidding. But good guess. Number of hours online. Wait, you're not, you're, you're not it's okay, I'm, I won't take the gift. No, 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 no. <laughs> Any? Online, okay, close. But. Yahoo message. <laughs> 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 okay, think of, let me give you a hint, think of uh, Google property. Number of hours Fantastic, your name, sir. Sorry, Andrew. Fantastic. Let's have a round of applause, man. But exactly, this is absolutely not exactly what Apple said, but it's like Apple Yes. This is actually the number of hours of YouTube videos that are uploaded per minute. Thank you, Albert. Okay, but I still have a few stickers for every one of you, so maybe you can just pick it up on your way out. Okay, so that's the end of the quiz, that's the end of the fun part. Now, this is our philosophy, what, what do we believe in? Advertising should be measurable, it sh we should be accountable for advertising and it should be, should be able to optimize our advertisements. Second, you should only pay for when you get for what you get and you should have total control over your ads. If anyone of you disagree, please raise your hand. Third, it should be flexible. You should not be bound to advertise anywhere or anytime or in any particular region. You should have the control to go international, you should have the ability to go local, and you should be able to cater to every possible target audience of yours. The third, again summarizing it, it is for every possible person who is out there. Each of you, I know most of you are from, uh, our techies are from the technology background, but you have customers, you have clients, you have colleagues who you know, who are uh, aged anywhere between 18 to 55, but you should be able to reach out to every single one of them. Now, what is the Google network? So the Google network comprises of the search network and what we call the content network. In search, you obviously have Google search, which is what Google is all about. Then you also have search partners like AOL, you know, ask.com, Netscape, who, where you can show your advertisements on their specific website when the search is being performed in their website. You have content publishers, they are part of our content network, so pretty much everything that you can think of, 90% of most uh, websites around the world, Mel can throw some light on that because she works specifically with them, are part of our content network. So this actually gives us a huge opportunity because you can target your ads uh, to these uh, websites where your target audience is. Then of course you have Google properties like uh, Google Mobile, Google YouTube, uh, Gmail. Monsieur um, will talk about the genre. We'll talk about uh, Google Mobile ads in a few minutes. And then of course you have a, a bunch of social networking websites which is big, and that's why. And then I was giving out the vouchers. 600 million people on social network. Well, now that we know all this information, what is happening in the marketplace? This was a research done. This is third party. Trust me, this is not my 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 numbers. These are all authentic numbers by the third party. So we did a research uh, of online versus offline, and uh, this was a. Uh, this is specific a bit to technology because I thought it might be more relevant to you guys. And uh, what we saw is uh, the percentage of people who are researching online against offline. Offline would be newspapers, you know, television, or you know, 
going to the library, picking up an encyclopedia to find out more information in the IT field. You know, this is so that's it's so somewhat relevant. And we saw a whooping 68% of people who are looking for anything to do with online, whether it's a purchase or research, they're doing it uh, with IT, sorry, they're doing it online as opposed to a 32. And of course, uh, if you see, look at the second one, the second pie, how much of that research is influencing their decision of going or not going for a product or a service? So you can see very influential 46% of all the of, of the 68 percent who will go online to research <coughs> and of course the three percent you can see you know, it, it's completely up to them whether they found relevant information or not if they want to they should have i don't know where they were searching but uh, three percent didn't find uh, didn't influence their decision but we have to look at actually 46 and 51. okay so again, two thirds of IT research is done online. Uh, these are some of the, the resources that people use for researching on a product or a service specific to technology. And if you see general search engines are ranked second, of course, our company websites being the first when people are researching online. Okay, now that we know all these things. Is there any question uh, so far on the slides that I showed? Anything? Okay, fantastic. So now that we know all these things, you know, what's the solution to this? What is the Google solution to this? So Google offers a solution which we call the push and the pull strategy. First, I'll talk about the pull strategy, which most of us are familiar with, Google search. So what happens is when a person is searching on the internet, obviously they go to Google, they search it. So it pretty much, mean, pretty much means that they're looking for you actively. You know, That's why what we call is, it's the push pull strategy where you actually pull in your customers when they are looking for you. That's the best thing that can happen to any business. And the second thing that we call is the push strategy where you push yourself and reach out to your audience where it's not like a newspaper or a television where you don't know whether you have an interested audience or not, but on websites which have which they regularly visit and you know are of interest to them. So how it all works, I'll just go again into some detail. Again, the pull strategy, Google search, most of you are aware of it, some of you who are not for them. This is ideally how a Google search page looks like. This is what we call a query by the user. Here, in this case, it's asset management. These are what we call the organic search results. Everyone pretty much knows about this. And these are what we call AdWords ads. On the top and on the right hand side. So if you notice, if you notice that the ads that you see here are very, very relevant to the search query. That's the Google AdWords technology where your ads show only to people who are interested in your product or your service. Like I said, sponsored link, they allow you to control your message and speak to your audience when they are actively looking for you. And let me tell you, all these ads that you see, you can customize these ads. If you remember, I spoke about that advertising should can should be customizable, right? So you can change the messaging on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, completely up to you and cater to your audience. So to summarize the search network, I would say your ads show under the sponsored links. If I just go back one slide you will see that there are sponsored links out there here. So these are Google Ads. They show under the sponsored links uh, section and they are based on a cost per click model. Does anyone of you know who what a cost per click model is? Anyone? You will monetize the CPS. Sorry? You will monetize the CPS. Click, click the Correct. Okay, great. So what happens is pretty much 
if I compare online advertising to traditional forms of advertising, pretty much in traditional, you are paying to show your ads on, on a certain space, be it a newspaper, radio, television, anything. Whereas on Google, you do not pay a single cent to show your ads on which is considered to be the world's biggest platform. Instead, the only time we charge you is when an interested user clicks on your ad and goes to your website. So it's an automatic thing that happens that any person who clicks on your ad directly goes to your website to any specific, specific page of your website that you want them to land on. So that's the only time you pay and that's why it's called the cost per click model. The third thing that I want to say is the ad variations and the keywords be edited with Google AdWords. This is just what I was talking about a couple of minutes back. Everything can be customized on, on like every minute. You can change the messaging of your ad. You can add keywords. You can delete keywords uh, based on uh, your knowledge. And uh, there are a lot of tools within the AdWords interface which help you to do that. And third, one of the most important things that Google believes in, again, if you, go, if you just can remember the first point that I made, that we should be accountable and you should know where you're spending your dollars, is accountability and the ability to track your performance and your dollars. So with the Google interface, and of course, when you will be talking about analytics, we allow you to track every single time your ad is shown by Google, every single visitor that is coming to your website, with analytics, you have the ability to figure out what are they doing in your website, you know, which are the pages that they are going to, and what is the associated cost that you've paid against this. Because this, we think at Google, is very important. <coughs> okay, so that was the summary of the search network. Any questions so far? Anything that I just, uh, you found interesting? Anything? Yes. There are not a question. Yes. We are having a Google moderator open here. So we are collecting all questions together. Oh, okay. okay just to let fantastic. you know. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. So if there are no questions on the search network, I hope I was able to explain that in a nice way. Moving on to the content network. This is quite interesting and especially because you know this is a great time because the soccer world cup is here and a lot of people are taking advantage of it. I'll tell you how. So what is the Google Content Network? So the Google Content Network basically is nothing but we have a network of publishers with us. So all these websites who have collaborated with Google and have agreed to, uh, to share their space where we can put our advertisers ads on their websites. So with the Google Content Network, you can reach around 80% of the internet users worldwide. That is the, that is the spread of the network. There are 4.3 billion page views per day. There are 705 million monthly visitors, and there are thousands and thousands of publishers, some of the biggest of publishers like New York Times, to the, the smallest but the most relevant of blogs uh, specific to uh, the technology industry, travel industry, everything. Now, to give you an idea of how your ads show on the content network, so if you look at the top left hand corner, these are text ads, and uh, on the right hand side bottom corner, these are rich media ads or what we call display uh, ads or banner ads. So, what happens is again, it's not that your ads uh, are shown randomly at any website. What Google does is Google actually matches the content of your ad with the content of the website, and that's when when they find a match that, okay, this website is talking about something to do with technology and we have this advertiser who's selling something which is to do with technology, there's a match. And that's when the Google, uh, Google will place your ad on that specific website. Something that we call um, contextually targeting. Moving on again. We have different options of targeting the content network. First was contextual, second, uh, and the third being placement and category targeting, where again, these are just a few examples of the 
kind of websites we have are kind of uh, bent towards uh, technology. Very few of them were just sample sites. Talking about content, uh, placement targeting, there are a lot of people who want to control their placement. Like I mentioned, we want to control our advertising. We want to make sure that where our ads are being shown are the right places where we want to show our ads. So with placement targeting, what happens is you are able to handpick uh, websites which you think are relevant to your business and where your target audience uh, visits regularly. So you handpick these websites, put them into your account, and these are the only web places where your ads are shown. And the third is category targeting. Like some examples of category, categories that we have in an inventory is uh, computers and electronics, hardware, software, you know, technology, news blogs, everything. So you can choose, so suppose uh, a lot of people might not know, okay, I don't know the website where I want my ads to show, but it would be nice if I had a category of uh, software where I know the websites which belong to this category are talking about software. So you can choose these individual categories and target your ads uh, to these categories and your ads show to all the, all the websites which fall within this category. So that was the Google Content Network to, uh, to put in a very simple manner. Anyone has any questions about the Content Network? Do we have a control on the category websites also? No, so the category, the way it's done, in the inventory, we have these categories and they have been pre-screened and all the websites that are within these categories are to do with that particular category. So if it's like a food category, you will have websites which are talking, uh, websites which are uh, giving out food reviews, websites uh, uh, about restaurants in the city, you know, uh, a pizza hut, all these, uh, all these websites, but they are very specific to that category. No, so we choose, you choose those categories, we give you those categories, and you can be rest assured that the, the website within those categories are specific to that. Otherwise, you can always go for that option, like yourself, I believe you won't have total control and you won't know where your ads are showing. Placement targeting would be the best option for you, where you handpick those websites. Any other questions? Yes? Does the, the, the publisher, the, the client, you pay less because the scope of the export is rather focus and less than normal blanket, no hackworks? No, so are you talking about publishers or are you talking about advertisers? Uh, oh yeah, advertisers, I mean the clients who are willing to pay for that cost like Yes. And because so, the scope of export is less, right? Because it's more focus. Okay, so yes. Less. So absolutely correct. But uh, the best thing about this, again, is you only pay when a person clicks on it. So again, look at it this way. This is branding for free. You're showing your ads but you're getting branding for free. Content network is a great way uh, to go ahead when you're looking for branding, when you want to get out there, show your ads to people. And uh, it doesn't matter if people don't click on your ad, they at least get to see your ad, and that's what you generally pay for when you're going for traditional advertising. So the, the unique cost for, for post back is the same as? Exactly, so it's the auction-based system that they follow, and it's exactly the same so again, you pay uh, per click. Great. Any other questions? Yes. If there are 10,000 people selecting the same website, right? Yes. How are they going to rate who is going to show? Exactly. So that's that's what I've just mentioned. There's an auction system that happens. The ranking depends on two things. First and the most important is how relevant your ad is to the content of the web page. And second is how much is uh, is your bid compared to your competitors. So in this case, I can say that I can select the website, but it will not show if my my bidding is less than the others. So you can select, not necessarily. Like I said, the most important thing is the content of your ad. It has to match with the content of the website. Let's take an example. You're selling uh, software, something to do with software, and you choose uh, ESPN. Uh, .com, right? Because it's a popular site, a lot of visitors. But the content of the website does not necessarily match with your I mean, advertisement. Over another advertiser who's talking about sports, selling sports goods, you know, 
he will get preference over your ad because his ad is more relevant to the content of the web page. So among the same industry, the competition? Yes, so it depends on two things. Like I said, the first, the relevancy of your ad, the second, how aggressive you are in terms of bidding. Yes, it's maybe Manan can put more. Yes, it's also for targeting as well. So if you are a software company that wants to advertise on um, ESPN, you can, but that's a different model. It's all the same option, but it's a different model. And we can go into that later on. My yeah. more concern is the same industry. If there are so many, you know, uh, shoe retail shops trying to sell the shoes, yeah. yeah, so how are they going to be? So how we know that whether it's shown or not shown? So you can see, like I said, the dashboard includes data which shows how many times your ads have been shown, how many people have clicked on it. You can go to those websites and see for yourself as well when, when it's showing. Yeah, because it depends on how much you be right? Then you actually uh, display less than how often you actually refresh the page to see, right? Of course, it depends yeah. on how much you win. You're against all right. the So there will be challenges that your, your app will not be shown up even if you click the same, the same website, the, the website, right? So look at it this way. Suppose you are an advertiser, I'm an advertiser, same industry. We bid the same. Whose app do you think will show? And if there's one spot? There's one spot, but there will not be two companies, two, two in the industry with more than that. So let's say, for example, we've got 200. Yeah. So if let's say now I bid the list, and I don't know whether I'm the list, would I be, do I know whether it's, I bid the least amount or not? No, you don't get to see other people's bids. Yeah, so you so you will not know whether yours will be displayed until over a time when you see that whether you check your statistics, then you will know, right? Yes, so that way you can, and that's the, the flexible part of AdWords. When you see whether your ads are getting displayed or not, you can change your bids, you can change uh, your text ads to match the content of the website. So you should actually be knowing everything about your business and the kind of website you want to appear on, right? Within the technology, let's take the example of the technology sector, you also have people who are selling hardware, people who are selling software, people who are like providing services like asset management. Like an asset management guy will get preference over a guy who's selling hardware on, an asset, uh, on, a, on a website which is talking about asset management. And of course, then comes, if there are five guys who are, you know, providing asset management services and all of them have same relevancy, then it, it boils down to the bid, who, who's paying the highest bid. Does that make sense? Uh, it makes sense by just talking about the particular site. Okay, so maybe uh, Milan can uh, talk, talk about that later, about particular sites, right? Okay, fantastic. Any other questions? Yes. When you say operating system, you mean Windows, Linux? Windows, Linux. So, uh, for example, people using Windows Linux. So, any person who is going to Google, yeah. irrespective of the operating system they are using? Uh, no, yeah. only people that, that, that uses Linux to browse the website can see my ads. No, there is no way of routing uh, only Linux users or any specific uh, OS user. It's, it's more of targeting by Google. You know, any person who's visiting Google, whether they are using Linux uh, or Windows, anything, they go to Google and they can see your app. In this case, if they search for Linux software, very So Linux software, and if you're selling Linux software, and they search on the Linux software on Google, your app will appear next to it. On server. Yeah. It's not based on what operating system. No, it's not based on the operating system. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. But nice thought, yes. Does that answer your question? Okay, great. Any other question? Please um, decide on the level of relevance. I think that's a key, right? Yes, that is the key to our judgment. Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say cars, car automotive industry. You are an advertiser, you are an advertiser, and uh, you sell Mercedes only, and you are in the industry and you do car repairs. You have a garage, right? A user types in buy, Mercedes car. You both are in the same industry, the auto industry, right? 
you have a keyword in your account which says Mercedes car, right? Your ad, the text ads, talk about buying the latest Mercedes Benz today, yada, 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 come visit our show. His, he has a keyword which is Mercedes Benz again because he services Mercedes Benz. But his ad says, come to a garage to get our, your Mercedes Benz serviced at this price, right? And your website, obviously, you're giving them more information about Mercedes Benz, where it's, it's a garage website for him. Which ad do you think is more relevant to the user? Yeah, the one. Your ad, right? You'll have the same keywords, but the service that you provide, obviously, you have to qualify it in your advertisement, right? It can't be deceptive. So the system recognizes that and assigns for you a better score in terms of relevancy. Whereas his goes low, goes down, because what he's actually providing as a service is not very relevant to what the user is looking for and also not very relevant to the keywords he has. He has Mercedes Benz. He should have service Mercedes Benz. Right? So that's the relevancy factor. So I'm supposed to be first the choice to be short. In terms of yes. even he bid for higher Yes. Market. Yes. So what happens is if you look at the second point, that's exactly your point. Google rewards you for having a high relevance factor. So what happens is the higher your relevancy goes, the lower you have to pay to show your ads on the first page of the Does that make sense? Okay. Of course, what happens with AdWords, you get high visibility and of course there's tremendous reach because we have the content network and Google holds 88% market share in Asia Pacific, yes. So higher relevance is measured by what words and keywords as well as where you can give it to. Yes. So unlike the page where you can give different content, so both are compared with the uh, place where they're placing the ads. Yes. So it depends on four things. The user query, what kind of keywords you're using, what kind of ads you're writing, and where you're taking the user. So the closely these four things match, the more relevance you have, and the system can recognize that, and it rewards you with lower bids. Anything else? Okay, great. So, another thing that I, which is very important uh, to know is uh, in AdWords, there's nothing like you have to spend this much because we have a very, uh, we have, it's, it's totally different when we say a budget and your spend because your budget is not necessarily your spend. Here, a daily limit, when we say a daily budget, it's actually a cap limit. We ask the advertiser, okay, how much are you willing to spend per day maximum? What's the max spend? That becomes your daily budget. But that does not necessarily mean that you're spending that every day. Because, can anyone tell me why? <coughs> no, why, why is it that even if you have a budget set, you not necessarily spend that budget. So if you're spending basically in the level place, the bid goes down. So there is a variable factor, so we may not exactly spend that much. Nobody can keep taking your money. Absolutely, bang on. Because it's a CPC based model, right? You pay only for clicks. Suppose, again, let's take an example here. You have uh, $200 sing dollars per day. That's the maximum you want, you can spend. You've told the system. And one click, for example, costs you one dollar. In a day, you get ten clicks. How much do you think you pay? Ten. Ten into one dollar. But the maximum you'll ever get is two hundred clicks. Because you've told the system that I do not want to spend more than two hundred on a daily basis. And that's how you can control your budget and your spend. That's the control I was talking about in in my first slide. So you tell the system that this is the cap limit, but not necessary that your budget is equal to your spend. Yes. Uh, 
it all depends on the number of clicks you get. Does that make sense? Okay. Advertisements stop appearing on the network when the daily limit has been reached. That's how we control your spend. We know that this person has told us, I don't want to spend more than X amount. So we stop showing your ads because we believe that if we show your ads, then people will click on it, then you will accrue a cost. So we stop showing your ads as soon as you reach the daily limit. And the higher the daily budget, the more visibility of you will have with more potential business because it all depends. There's so many user queries depending on which industry you are in, which vertical you are in. If there are 50,000 queries per day on your specific uh, service and you have a limited budget of, like, say, $10, then you are not being able to show your ads for all these 50,000 queries because the system will stop showing your ad as soon as you've got clicks worth $10. So you're potentially missing out on a lot of uh, relevant queries and future business. Does that make sense? Yes, so you get these alerts saying that uh, your ads have stopped showing or your daily budget is too low. And it will also give you a recommendation of how much your business, uh, how much your daily budget should be uh, to get to capitalize on the full traffic. Yes. How do you prevent click fraud? Okay, so very good question. So Google actually, like you can look it up on the internet anywhere, has the most robust click fraud. What we call uh, is the uh, click fraud. What, what is it called? Click fraud. Click What is the other term for click fraud? No. Anyway, so Google has the most. The yeah, robust click fraud system. So there are, I don't know how many levels of prevention to that, and they, we also have manual teams who make sure that there's no click fraud in in your system. And what it does is the system automatically removes if it thinks that okay. if there is like even point zero 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 one percent chance of that click being uh, click being fraudulent, it removes that from your from your data, and you're not charged for it. So that is rest assured and you can be absolutely 100% assured about that. Anything else? Okay, so moving on. Again, if you go back 600 million social networking users, YouTube belongs to Google. So what AdWords allows you to do is also advertise on YouTube. So what happens is when a person is uh, watching a video on YouTube, which is something to do with your business or in your industry, your ad can appear by the side or within the video at the bottom when, uh, and, and target your user when, when they're looking for something to do with your, uh, with your service or your product. And because YouTube belongs to Google, it's very easy for us to know what are the kind of uh, videos being watched for and what your business is so we can easily match it and you can reach out to the number of YouTube users that we have instantly. Okay, so there are three key reasons of success for AdWords. The first being it's a global reach. With a click of a mouse you're sitting in here in Singapore, you can target uh, Greece, let's say, if you can send to Greece. You can target America, you can target Antarctica if you want. So it's all within a click of a mouse. There's global reach that we have. And of course, 68% of all research online, uh, it, it research is done online before a decision is taken. Second, targeted. It allows your business to precisely target your customers because you know what your demographics are, your audience, demographic audience is, and you can exactly reach out to them, say, you want to show to show your ads to users who are aged between 18 to 35 and who are visiting uh, those uh, websites. So we have uh, websites in our inventory which talk about these are the websites which are visited by users uh, who are female in gender aged between 18 to 35 and we can target them. So that's the most effective uh, method of targeting. 
And the third is it's measurable. It's very, very, very important to measure your advertising dollars where you're spending it. We have the AdWords tracking system as well as analytics, which gives you in-depth uh, knowledge of where you're actually investing your money and how much you're getting in return. So key takeaways is there is a huge demand on whatever you're selling or you know your, your products and services out there in the internet and people are on the internet looking for them. Think about it yourself from a user's perspective. If you're looking for anything today, be it flight tickets or technology related things, where do you go? Do you go to a library to find out information or do you just go onto the internet and search for it? Investing now south in Southeast Asia specifically is the best time because what I call it is the buses here in Southeast Asia. In Europe, in EMEA, the markets are mature, the CPCs are really high, so to enter the market, the threshold is really high. So if you're a new player in the market, you will find it difficult to enter the market. Whereas in Southeast Asia, the market is still nascent. So this is the right time to invest in online advertising if you want. Third, online advertising with Google is flexible, it's cost effective, and you know where you're spending your advertising. Any questions you may have? Anyone? Okay, so it's pretty simple. If anyone of you want to try it out, definitely the people who bought the $50 vouchers, try it out. It's for free for you guys. And, uh, all you need to do is uh, go to adwords.google.com. There's a simple sign up process which is super easy. All you need to do is this is the how adwords.google.com looks. You Click on start now, you are taken to this page, you just put in what uh, email you want to use, you set the time zone which should be ideally Singapore, your currency preference, and this then you'll be taken to this page where you can create your first campaigns. There are campaign settings, so this is the targeting options, where are your customers, where you want to target, whether they are in Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore. What language do they speak? Do you want to target them in English? If you are targeting Indonesia, do you want to target them in Bahasa? Or if you are targeting, uh, let's say, France, do you want to target them in French? What is your average investment, the maximum you are willing to spend? Again, remember the budget concept. Put in the cap limit and tell the system this is the maximum I do not want to go for. And it's pretty simple. So here I have just taken an example of a uh, travel, uh, travel guide. You write your ad text yourself. Here you can see uh, book your tour packages and there's an ad preview which shows how your ads will look. On the second half you have the keywords uh, where you can choose uh, keywords and the system also gives you an option uh, of, uh, like it gives you options where it suggests keywords that are relevant to your business. One thing which is very important is highlight uh, your product and uh, services or your unique selling proposition, what makes you different from your competitors. So make sure you mention that in your ad. And a good way of coming up with keywords is think like a user. Think about if you were a customer, what would you be searching on? It's very, it's very simple, it's common sense. Come up with maybe two or three uh, keywords like that, put it into the system. There's something called the keyword tool. Based on those keywords, the system will recommend uh, what are the keywords that are doing around the industry and what will be beneficial for you. And uh, this, after you're done, this is how your AdWords interface looks like. You have con complete control. You can see on top left hand corner, that's your ad. That's the budget that you have per day. It will show all the options where you're targeting, which are the networks you're targeting, your country. It will show your keywords what is the maximum uh, cost per click that you have paid for. You see, this is what I was talking about, clicks, impressions, CTR, what is the average CPC that you are being charged, your cost, and where your ads are appearing, what position your ads are appearing on. Sounds good, any questions? And again, if someone searches on your ad, Let's say travel packages, you have a keyword travel packages, this is how your 
ad will show up on Google search. If my company, if my business is shown on the normal, you know, the standard search results, yes. do I also have to pay for? No, standard, uh, the organic search results are completely free of cost, but uh, there is no control over organic search. No one has control over organic, organic search, whereas with sponsored links, you have total control. The same thing appears about organic and Facebook. What are the you know, ratio of click to link? No, so it all depends because we just deal with sponsored links, right? It all depends on the user whether they want to click on your organic search results or your sponsored links. It depends because uh, for most people it's very difficult to get their business up on organic search, especially if you're in an SMB. Uh, and uh, what happens is uh, the user can actually decide whether to click on the sponsored links or the organic search, but all our sponsored links are a guaranteed way to show up on Google's first page, whereas organic search is not. I'm not sure about that because I don't have that information, about, but that's a very good question. But uh, maybe I'll just uh, note it down. I'll, I'll try and find out. Is there an option? Is there an option that do not show my ad, my page is shown in the organic? No, there is no option there. Anything else? No. Yes. How do you determine your ads to be displayed on the horizontal sponsor link on the vertical? Okay, so the one on top is that's a premium position. That totally depends on relevancy and. Uh, there's a threshold that you need to cross to show up there. And again, the determining factor is your relevancy and your weight. But relevancy being the utmost of utmost importance. There is a threshold to get up there. And you will get to see because if that is the position one, like I showed in the AdWords interface, you can see your average position where your ads appear. Any other questions that you may have? Anything? If not, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for being patient and listening to me. If you have any person who is willing to try it out, other than you four, I'll, I'll track you guys. Make sure that you are on AdWords. Try it out. But friends, colleagues uh, who are willing to try out AdWords, it's the most cost effective model. Definitely, uh, if you need any help, I've, I've left my business cards at the registration desk with my contact details. Just shoot me an email, I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Thank you again. Thanks for coming down.